Hello everyone, this is Merlo and welcome to this C program showcase where I'm gonna show you how we created a simple text-based program in C, take you through the process of creating the program, showing how it works and then playing a simple game of Brady is Missing. Before we begin though, I'd like to thank all my friends who worked with me on this project, shout out to them, they've been amazing and helped me a lot creating this program. And shout out to our ICT teacher for giving us this group project, without him this project would never have come to life. So the goal of the game is simple, the player goes through our school and making different choices based on where he is, he has to find our classmate Breedy who has mysteriously gone missing. How we achieve this is quite simple, the console prints out some text and then the player has to input a number, usually from 1 to 3 so that he can decide where to go next and answer a simple riddle. If he gets everything right, he will eventually find Brady. So how does the program actually work? We begin with the main function. You see here at the beginning we declared some simple variables that I'll explain later while we code, and then we start with a huge while loop that scrolls down to the very end of the program. This is needed so that every time a player clears a level, the program loops back and checks which level it needs to play next. If the while loop isn't here, the game goes through the levels in numerical order, but once it's at the end, it stops. In our mega while loop, there are some smaller while loops like this one, sorry, this one, this one, this one, and so on. These are what I called levels. Every level is a simple stage where the player is faced with a question and has to answer with a choice. Determining on the choice he makes, he will be sent to different levels, and so on and so forth. So, this is what I've called level 0 of the game, this is the introduction. After a simple CLS function which clears the screen of the console, the text on the screen will display some introduction and then will ask the player for a name. You can see this check name function, which is something we created and I'll explain later. We use it to check if the name the player has input corresponds to some specific names and prints out a specific text, giving some cool easter eggs. After that, the player is given a choice, in this case only one choice, to start the game. You can see we use this scanInt function, which is another function we created, so why don't I just explain it now? We had to create this function because simply using scanF wasn't enough, as if the player inputs a string instead of a number, the game would crash. We use this as a security so that even if the player inputs a string or anything besides the number he's supposed to, he will always be safe from the game crashing. The game it looks for a character and saves it in a string value. Then after the game has got its string, it checks if it's a digit, meaning a number from 0 to 9. If the, number, the first number of the string is a number from 0 to 9, it will return the number it's given. This minus 48, it's because the output of this function is an ASCII characters, and an ASCII number is just a number plus 48. If the return is not a number, it will just output 0. So you can see how the function is used here. The function will ask for an input, and if you input a 1, it will go to current level number 1. If the choice is not 1, meaning anything but 1, it will print out watch out, you need to write a number that makes sense, try again, and then ask for the input again. Once the choice is 1, it will go to current level 1, and in the loop we'll search for level 1, which happens to be right here, and we'll play what happens in level 1. At the beginning of every level we use this print object function. It's another function defined by us, and I will explain briefly what it means. Every level begins with this simple print object function, which is an action we created. I will now explain what it does. So as you can see here, the first thing it does is clear the screen, so that everything left from early levels will be deleted. Then it checks for a number of parameters, keys, lab, quest and watch out, which are parameters that we need to check so that we know what happened in the level earlier. If the player had some items like the keys or the lab code, it will print out inventory, mysterious keys or lab cut, based on what the player has in its inventory. If variable quest is on, Basing on the value of the variable quest, it will have a switch function, which will print out a different quest, meaning a different thing for the player to do, so that he will always remember what he needs to do next. 
If the watch out function is activated, it means the player has inputted a wrong thing, like a string or a number that didn't make sense in the earlier input. So it will print out watch out, you need to write a number that makes sense. Try again. The level itself is really simple. After a series of printfs, the first of which gives just a simple story or context to uh, the location you're in, and then it's given a choice. One, two, three in this case to go to the western wing, central corridor or eastern wing, which are three different levels. The game then scans for a, cho a choice, in this case from one to three, and uses a switch function for the variable choice to determine what the number inputted was. If it's case one, it will go to level two, which is the western wing. If it's case two, it will go to level 13, the central corridor, and if it's case three, it will go to level three, the eastern wing. The default output, so everything but one, two or three, would be watch out equals one, so the print object function knows that it needs to print watch out, you need to output a number that makes sense, and then it will just do the level all over again. Every simple level then proceeds like this, but in some occasions there are some levels that are a little bit different. This is an example, this is the multimedia room. There is a door here that needs to be opened with the keys. If you have the keys, meaning the variable keys is equal to one, you will print F uh, the door unlocks and you go to the abandoned church and you go to current level 18, the church. Else, so if you don't have the keys, you will just go back. Here, if in the same case, one, the choice is different based if you have the keys or not. This is how we integrated items in the game, we'll find different items that will do different results in different levels. These items are keys and lab and quest. Quest is not a simple item 0 to 1, but can assume different values from 0 to 4 and will determine what you need to do next to proceed in the game. Here is a more complex level, perhaps the most complex in the entire program. First of all, you can see that there is a watch out equal 0 here. This is actually in all the levels and it's needed to clear out the watch out variable, which might be on if the player had inputted a wrong number in the earlier level. This level is more complex because there is a mini game here. You will meet the science teacher here that will ask you a question to recognize a rock based on the description he gives you. After giving you four choices, the game checks what you've answered with a switch function. In case one, three and four, the answer was wrong, and so it sends you back to the beginning of the level. In case two, the answer was right, so it sends you back to the beginning of the level anyways, but first it gives you a clue to how you can find Breedy. There is a catch, however, because this whole level was actually accessible just if you had the lab coat. So if you didn't have the lab coat, a totally different outcome happens. Here's another level that looks a little bit different, but it's actually the same as the science labs. Another minigame is here, and if you answer the question right, you will be given a different output than if you had given it wrong, of course. Here, if you get the question right, you will be given a quest value of 1, meaning a new quest will begin and you will be able to advance in the game and get the keys. And so this brings us to the end of the game. The end of the game is actually pretty simple, you just have one choice, to continue or to go back. The ending is different, basing of your name is Brady or not, just to have another easter egg, and at the end of the game it gives you a choice, to go back and do it all over again, or to go back to the real world. The first one means to start the game over, so it sends you to current level 0, and resets all the item variables, so that you will start from the very beginning. In case 2, giving the game variable equals to 1, means ending the huge while loop the whole game is in case in, thus ending the program for good. Something we haven't touched on is the check name function, a function we created to check if two strings, in this case our name, so the name the character is given himself and the name we given them, are the same. We use this to check if the name his input is a particular name to give out a little easter egg. The check name function is actually pretty simple. You will notice that in the input here, the n1 and n2 variables as a star, meaning that is the memory allocation address of the variable and not the variable itself, so in the function here we can actually modify it. What we do then is create two different types of two new different types of strings and then capitalize them with the two upper function present in the C type H library. After we do this, it's a simple matter of checking if one is equal to two with a string compare function and output 1 if the string is the same and 0 if the string is not the same. Thus the function can check if our names are the same even if the names aren't exactly the same, meaning the capital letters are messed up. So this is how the entire game works. 
Unfortunately, I wasn't able to capture some gameplay for you, but I encourage you to play the game as I will leave the executable file and the source code in the description. I also encourage you to modify the source code and create your own games, I'm so curious to see what you will be able to do with our code. This being said, I will see you all next time, and bye bye!